We're coming off the national championship game. We've got the playoffs. And this is Here's the Deal with Brendan and Scott. I am Scott. Good morning. Brendan Morris here. Uh, Brendan, I see you have continued to face away from me even further than the last episode. And I believe that comes back to the fact that you don't like to listen to anyone talk about sports that doesn't have the same opinion as you. That's not true. I value others' opinions. Your son, as we were watching the national championship game today, uh, sorry, uh, together, um, said, uh, Dad, uh, no one listens. No, you don't like to listen to anyone talk about sports except for Mr. Woodard. And my response was, well, uh, actually, he doesn't like to listen to me talk about it either. Well, that's not true. I, I how's this a oh, little, yeah. little turn? That's like a Collinsworth slide. It is. It's a new it's a new thing uh, a that Morris we can do turn. locally uh, here. I, I value your uh, analysis and opinions on. Uh, all things sports related and chick flick related. I love it. Well, this is here's the deal. We, of course, are brought to you by Gout <laughs> <laughs> and and Linesite2020.com. Linesite2020 utilizes fully integrated statistical models with deep analytics and a philosophical approach to meaningful performance based data. That's us. We have data and we have performance based improvements for all gamblers. Yep. Or non gamblers. We like to shepherd non or novice gamblers. That's right. That's our, that's our spot. And we like to put out amazing content at Linesite 2020 uh, on Twitter, at Linesite 2020 on Instagram, which we learned recently Instagram 90% women. On Instagram, so that's for the ladies. Your chick flick recommendations will shine bright. That's right. We should have some sort of Oscar gambling podcast, chick flick based revenue thing. What do you think? I think that that is squarely in your corner, and I <laughs> fully support whatever it is you want to put out. Okay, well, we can do that. So go to the to the, to the website. Um, there's a lot of great content there. There's, I wrote a blog post about gambling versus investing. I'm going to write an article soon on the Kelly principle. So uh, handle versus hold just some of that stuff. If you're not a gambler, you want to learn about sports gambling. You can learn a lot of that stuff on the website, lineside 2020.com. You know, the, I, the most interesting thing that I learned about the gambling industry was when we started doing research several years ago for building our pitch book for investors. And uh, the most interesting part of the gambling industry to me is penny slots. So here's November's net profit. Okay. In Nevada, this is by the Nevada gaming board. Number one in November net profit, blackjack, 124.6 million. I say number one, it's just number one on my list. Mm -hmm. Craps 40.7 million, roulette 36.4 million, back rat 94.3 million, sports 72 million, penny slots, net profit in November 328.2 million dollars. That is astonishing. Penny slots. So gambling is big business, and we have a podcast about gambling. And so we would obviously love to get uh, new sponsors as the title sponsor of here's the deal. Uh, and really this is marketing couch cushion change. You know, we're not talking about millions of dollars here, but you can get in on the ground floor, but for that title sponsorship opportunity, you'd get your logo displayed on the background of our YouTube video with my Vanna white hand. Uh, you would get a sponsored by tagline with your website at the beginning and the end of the episode. Uh, you'd get your website content and contact information uh, on our show notes. Uh, you'd get your website and contact information in the description of our social media posts. Uh, we would absolutely say sponsored by gout, for instance, so many times. 
You'd get a 30 second commercial. You would get a guest appearance. We would allow you to be ignored by Brendan <laughs> for, for an hour, one time a year. Uh, and we would give you a 30 second commercial. We'd do a read. We'd get some podcast artwork modified to read sponsored by you. Fair sponsor. That's a ton of content and a ton of value. I think. Yeah. I think that's a, a tremendous amount of value, uh, that you can, in a lot of instances track. Yeah. Uh, this very trackable, uh, place to, build your brand. Um, but more than anything, we need somebody to, to partner in with us so that we're not carrying the load. We have gotten to the NCAA tournament. We are holding a 60 to one ticket, but we'd like to hedge some bets in there. I love it. We're going to have a live podcast in the near future. Uh, you can have us out to your establishment, to your kid's birthday party. We really will do kind of whatever. Um, but I, I had an idea and we're in negotiation with an iconic Dallas location to get this done, be out there in the community, raising awareness about sports gambling and giving all of the greatest information you've ever heard in your tiny little ear holes. It's going to be at, uh, sixth grade cotillion. Is that no, who, no, we're not, that is doing not, the remote there. not it, but okay. we might, I mean, we could. Uh, uh, just a little, again, tease ahead fantasy baseball. This is the, this is my favorite thing about our fantasy baseball league. We're going to get Jason Bateman into our league. He's a podcaster. We are podcasters. We have some ancillary knowledge of, of Jason Bateman through friends that we know Clayton Kershaw, uh, Clayton Kershaw and I went to high school together. At the same time, I don't know that that's true. Well, in about the same time as like Angie Harmon and I also went to high school together. Y'all attended the same brick and mortar high school. That's correct. All that's right. correct. Did you know? Yes. I once asked Angie Harmon out on a date at a bar. Really? Yeah. So we were at the old, um, yeah, what's that place on Knox? It's on a it's old on, monk. No, it's on a green um, SMU Boulevard now. Okay. Uh, Barley House. Yes. Barley House. We were at the Barley House and uh, Angie Harmon was sitting at the bar and I was, I was probably 22, 23. So she was probably 29. And I, I, I left the bar and I said, you know what? I'm going to go back and ask her on a date because I would feel bad if I didn't do that. So I go back in the bar, sit down next to her. And I said, hey, uh, you Angie Harmon. Didn't we go to high school together? <laughs> She's like, yeah, I went to Holland Park, you know, 1990. I was like, oh, yeah, 1996. <laughs> so my question is, where was Jason Seahorn in uh, all was, of this? He was not in the picture, uh, obviously. But I'm pretty but, sure they were married at that point. Uh, were they? I hate to no bust way. you on facts, no. but uh, I think that he was playing safety for the Giants during the Super Bowl when they played the Ravens. Maybe and they were already married. Then. And she was definitely not with Jason Seahorn at the time. I wasn't there. I can't tell you what year this happened or if it did happen. I, I can't <laughs> fact check you on this. I but don't. I do know that she was married to Jason Seahorn at or around the, the alleged incident. That's true. My wife's sister uh, delivered their baby. She's a nurse. Um, anywho. Was it your baby? No. Uh, so I uh, sit there and talk to Angie Harmon for a minute. And then I'm ready to kind of consummate the deal. And I say... You know, could I get your uh, get your number? Maybe we could go uh, out to dinner sometime. And her friend goes, "No." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Thank you." And I got up and I left. So that's my uh, tangential fantasy baseball story about getting Jason Bateman into our fantasy baseball league with our friends Jake Radcliffe and Brian Lahan and Kyle Patterson and John Azano. Some of the best fantasy baseball owners, knowledge folks that you'll ever run into. I think the Patterson and Nazano team won like five titles in a row. And now we're probably getting into, I don't care about your fantasy team uh, land, but they won many, many titles 
uh, one time on the very last pitch of the baseball season when Luke Gregerson gave up a home run to Buster Posey and, and just got them uh, uh, their, their what third title in a row, something like that. Anywho, what, what, who's the number one fantasy baseball player this year? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the early look ahead to the number one pick being uh, let's go Jose Abreu. <laughs> There's no way Jose Abreu will be the number one fantasy baseball player this year. Okay. I don't really care because I don't draft until about the 15th round uh, because I like to sell the future for the present. Um, that's kind of my fantasy baseball strategy, but let's get into the actual sports that happen on the field. Our bowl performance. I mean, fantastic. We ended up 26 and 21 plus 8.9 units. Let's talk a little bit about the national title. So what we put out there for our subscribers, Georgia minus two and a half for three units. We had the first half under 26 and a half for a unit and a half. We had Brian Robinson under 68 and a half yards. His last carry goes from minus two yards to take him from 69 yards to 67 yards. He's over the fence. He hops back, back on the other side of the fence. That was an incredible part of the game. Very appreciative of that. Uh, The only thing we lost was James cook over 20 and a half receiving yards. Uh, He did not get there. What were your thoughts on the national championship game, which obviously was a big deal in your house because of so many Bulldog fans? It was a huge deal uh, in our home. I was really pleased to see uh, Georgia finally get over the hump. I mean, they've just been knocking on the door uh, to get a national championship for the first time in 40 years. Uh, I know a ton of Georgia alums and fans, obviously, married to one and it just the the excitement for a good season is always there they're passionate they're into it and it just seems like they should have more than one title in the last 40 years but the important part is getting one and what happens to the brand and the program once you get that first one uh their coach isn't going to go anywhere he's not an nfl type of coach He's young. Uh, I think he also asked Angie Harmon out on a date. Uh, Might have been during a widespread panic show in Athens. I know that he was paying homage. He's uh, at least in the better uh, age range for that. uh, He is, but more than importantly, he is super aggressive. And I think that's what you got to have if you're going to ask out uh, a world-class actress. But I I was happy for Georgia. I thought that their game plan was fantastic. A lot of bend, but don't break keeping uh, Alabama to field goals instead of uh, allowing them to punch it in. Uh, They were over aggressive in the SEC championship game in the national championship game. It was very clear that they were keeping things in front of them. Uh, They were not allowing the big plays. They allowed a couple, but that's to be expected when you're going against, you know, a dynamite team like Alabama. Uh, I just thought they had a great game plan. They had an opportunity to fold in the second half with the controversial fumble call, uh, and they didn't, yeah. and that was a, a, a surprise to me. Uh, so I, I thought it was an outstanding game. It was definitely a fun watch, and uh, glad to see Georgia get over it. And I just feel so heartbroken for Alabama fans. <laughs> I mean, here they were about to get their just reward, and it just, <clears throat> they just ends in heartbreak. How will they ever recover? I don't know. I don't know. But I here's the deal on this. Uh, Bryce Young is a real problem for college football. That guy is awesome. Will Anderson, the same. They'll both be back next year. Alabama preseason number one. I'm sure Bryce Young will be number one in the Heisman odds uh, when those come out uh, later this year. You know, he just, to me, so poised for a young guy. He's very slight. Uh, Gets the ball out of his hand, throws a good deep ball, can scramble. I mean, he is a really, really good player. Yep. No Uh, doubt. I think my favorite part was uh, on the pick six, Kirby Smart jumps out of the gym and then is screaming, get down, get down, as as Ringo's just running down the sideline. And we're like, score, score." (laughs) yeah, get in Uh, there, punch it in. Uh, that that's was a, f- a really fun game to watch. Most people are tired of SEC. 
uh, dominance and national championships and national championship matchups and two teams in the playoffs and those scenarios. But the bottom line to me is you want the two best teams in the game. And those clearly were the two best teams. Let them play it out. And, uh, and, a, and a great game. Just a really fun game. Yeah. Fun. Cause you, I think um, f- uh, fan bases and uh, what, those institutions bring to a game just makes the atmosphere that much greater. Yeah. Uh, I I don't care to ever see, and I I don't think we're in danger of seeing a PAC 12 team in a national championship game or even a playoff anytime (laughs) or even a football game. Yeah. Uh, they there's their persona non grata. Uh, but I have no interest in, uh, trying to watch UCLA fans in a national championship game. I mean, they bring nothing to the table. There's no excitement. (laughs) in that whatsoever so keep uh doing your r&d at your campus there in los angeles and just yeah, keep it to yourself enjoy you know a couple of runs at a pac-12 title but uh stay out of the national spotlight we appreciate that very much and i don't think jason bateman is a ucla guy so that's fine we can we can bag on ucla all we want uh all right Bowls, once again, hit uh, www.linesite2020.com. Check out our performance there. 26 and 21 plus 8.9 units in the Bulls for the football season. 93, 86 and 8 plus 12 and a half units. So that sounds good. Lots of black numbers uh, on the old website there. We're really, really starting to turn it on um, handicapping wise. I don't think we're done with the coaching carousel. Let me let me jump in on that real quick. Uh, this Jim Harbaugh rumor seems to be uh, carrying the day quite a bit since you've had, you know, in the last 48 hours or so, a lot of NFL jobs opening. Supposedly he's interested in going somewhere. It's got to be Chicago, right? Um, I, I don't know what he's into. I just it sounds like he's going to get something, assuming they meet his demands and uh all that means for college football is you get a premier program, another job opening. And so who jumps into that hoop? I mean, that's going to be an interesting deal because none of this really truly stops until you get to uh, the end of the Super Bowl. Cause you're looking at coordinators on whatever team uh, is, is our, whatever teams are still playing in the winning team. I mean, both those coordinators are likely gone uh, because that's just kind of how the trend works. And uh well, we're sitting, at, we're sitting at eight NFL openings as well, right? Is, I is mean, it, we're up to eight. I think that's right. Uh, and and someone's talking about Ryan Day going to the NFL. That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, if he thinks now's the time to do this, I can't really do much more at Ohio State or don't want to deal with NIL going crazy. I busted my butt to get Quinn Ewers to flip from Texas to go to Ohio State. Now he's going back to Texas. Seems like a lot of wheel spinning. Hey, I go to the NFL. I don't have to deal with that at all. Yeah. Uh, not a not as big a pain threshold uh, in the NFL for losing, though. You know, yeah, but as you, Urban Meyer clearly find out. <laughs> my, my question to you is, who's your best guess to move from college to the NFL outside of Harbaugh? If you've got eight openings, you know, you're probably looking at maybe another college coach jumping into a job there. Who's that? Uh, you're, are you suggesting Ryan Day or do you think somebody else is uh, more uh, spotlighted? If I am an NFL GM owner, I'm not hiring a college coach. It's just failed too many times to me. Um, you know, maybe maybe Miami hires Nick Saban. Do you, do you feel like that's a... I think that when you asked Angie Harmon out at a bar that would have been a hell of a prophecy, but this does not seem to meet that criteria. And I sure don't think Ms. Terry wants to go live in Miami. No, they've already done that deal. Um, <clears throat> so let's get into the NFL. Jump. Regular season over. Uh, again, head up the website. You can see our performance there. 58, 48, and 1 plus 11.2 units in the regular season and the NFL playoffs. We've been historically very, very good. So subscribe, you know, get all the content. And I've never been to an NFL playoff game. Have you been to an NFL? I've been to many. Um, most of them have turned out to be 
uh, I think all of them have been Dallas Cowboy playoff games, and most of those have ended in heartbreak for the Cowboys. Well, so you've been to games in the last 25 years, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Not many, but yeah. Uh, well, there haven't been many. I mean, the, the, the last ahead. one I went to, Frito was there doing the post game, uh, Seattle at Dallas at Jerry World and uh, Tony Romo. No, Tony, no, Tony Romo dropped the snap that game. No, that was in Seattle. Oh, that was in and Seattle. that was about the time you asked Angie Harmon out on a date. <laughs> so here's the deal. You're not very good with dates and timelines. No, no. Uh, good ideas, but uh, not uh, correct in terms of uh, your mind and how it works with a calendar. I am an idea guy. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, the last game I saw, the last NFL game I attended was Dallas against San Francisco at Texas Stadium. That's the last NFL game I've been to. It was last playoff game or last NFL game? No, that's game the last at, NFL game I've been to, like 15 years ago. Is that when Terrell Owens visited the star? I believe George so. Teague. Yeah. I think yeah. it was like the last game at Texas Stadium. One of the last it, games. It wasn't. Uh, it was. Again. It was. Um, we can. Okay. This is it all was. Thank stamped. you. Okay. NFL playoffs, wild card round. The dogs like to eat in the wild card. What's the What's the stat? on the wild card performance ATS that you gave me uh, something like 64%. Amazing. So uh, let's talk about these games. We'll start in chronological order Saturday afternoon, which is your bugaboo <laughs> <laughs> dates and times. Very, very difficult for me. Saturday afternoon Raiders at Bengals Bengals. I got, I saw minus six this morning. Yeah, it's uh, down to minus five and a half. I like uh, that. It's fuel, fan fuel. I know uh, this. <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> I, they're not going to be a sponsor. <clears throat> um, okay. All the home teams are favorites uh, in the playoffs. Is that weird? No, nope. no, no, it's not. All right. So Raiders at Bengals. Obviously, I love the Bengals. I love Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, offensive rookie of the year, likely, um, and. You know, their offensive line, a little dicey. But this play is more about the Raiders just not being good. And, oh, my God, dude, that game, that was the worst football game I've ever seen in my life. In my tweet, the the Raiders and Chargers. I actually liked the game quite a bit because it was full of. I know. I mean, it was awesome. Of, of errors and crazy plays and conspiracy theories and long drives and uh, poor coaching at its finest. My my tweet was: This proves the NFL is at least tampering with games, or it proves NFL coaches are the dumbest human beings on earth. I mean, both teams can make the playoffs if they just take a knee, no injuries, right? We can take a knee. We're going to go to the playoffs, and instead they play just a wild ass game with so many coaching errors, starting with not kneeling, but Brandon Staley going for it down 14 on his own 19 yard line, Brandon Staley calling a timeout at the end of the game when the Raiders are simply happy to just take a knee and move on. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll never know if it actually changed Rich Passaccia's mind, but at least it said, well, I got to do something now. So I'm going to run it one more time and then I'm going to kick a field goal. I would agree that uh, serious coaching blunders there, but I, it's weird to me that Brandon Staley hasn't been fired yet. Uh, he shouldn't I know be fired he's in, in game. Uh, I don't think you can do that. I think oh. you have to at least wait till you get to the locker room in order to interface with your boss. Although, uh, if Jerry's they're down on the field all the time, just... I, he doesn't really go down there much anymore. And I think he's uh, restricted to his. Sweet and his family and, his and Johnny Walker Blue. Right, I think it, NFL has a no drinking policy on the field, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, I do think that the Raiders are a great story. Uh, we profited uh, tremendously with their win, uh, but they're going to be outside in the cold. I wouldn't rule us out playing the Raiders, but it seems like once our data is in, it probably is going to point to a Bengals play. Uh, you've got uh, the Raiders bottom five in the NFL and takeaways. It seems like they're going to have to have takeaways in order to compete in this game because 
how in God's name are they going to stop those wide receivers? I know Chase gets all the headlines and all the love, but T. Higgins is phenomenal. Tyler Boyd, phenomenal. And Joe Burrow can get it to anybody. I love T. Higgins at, at Clemson. He was great. Um, when's the last time I'm trying to look at the schedule here? When's the last time the Las Vegas Raiders played a cold game? Uh, I don't, I don't recall because I know that they uh, must be Denver. They were in Cleveland on December 20th. So that's cold. That's a little chilly, but I guess my point being, it's going to be cold in Cincinnati, really cold twenties. And yeah, they played Denver in October and there's no chance it was cold. Then. Yeah. You know, and so they've got the cold to deal with. And, you know, I, I heard some, some folks in local media talking, well, green Bay is not really that big of a home field advantage in the winter, you know, in the playoffs and they've lost there. Of course, everyone loses games. That <laughs> One team is going to lose the game in the playoffs, mm-hmm. but it's got that cold weather has got to affect these guys. On some level, I do, especially if they're they're coming in, they're going to be on a short week. They played the last game of the regular season, truly the last game and went to overtime and were emotionally exhausted and they lose their defensive tackle uh, for the postseason, who is a major disruptor. And then you get the first uh, game coming out of the box on Saturday on the road in a cold environment. I just don't know if they're going to have enough left. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I love the Bengals. All right, Saturday night fever. Patriots at Bills. Should have beaten the Dolphins, Bill. Bills minus four in this game. Um, Bill Belichick must just party balls when he's in Miami because he cannot beat the Dolphins in Miami. Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge for him, and you'd have to think that He was geared up and has team prepared for that game because there's no way in hell he wanted this matchup. No, he does not want any part of Buffalo. He knows that Buffalo absolutely stomped them a couple weeks ago in Buffalo. I mean, that game, the score, I think, was a 12 point win for the Bills, but it was domination by Buffalo. There's no way he wanted this. This is the last matchup this guy wanted. Yeah. And so here, um, I think Mac Jones is just getting a little tired. You know, the the Patriots really fell off at the end of the season. They had a chance, kind of controlled their own destiny to win the AFC East and just kind of faltered down the stretch. And so either Mac Jones is having, you know, that sort of rookies hit the rookie wall or teams are just scheming against him better now than they were early in the season. I think that's probably more likely that they've got more film on him. They now know his tendencies, what makes him scary. Hey, if you blitz him from the left side, he doesn't have that awareness to escape or the speed to escape. It could be any number of things we don't know. Uh, But one thing that is going to play in the favor uh, for Buffalo is that Josh Allen will throw an interception. Yes. I mean, that game he had, what, two weeks ago, uh, he three had picks three picks Atlanta. in the first half against the Falcons secondary. Right. I mean, was Dion back there? <laughs> I just don't get it. I, Josh Allen's a really weird enigma to me because he's got all of the tools. I mean, every single one of them. His arm is absolutely amazing. He can run, but he just he has those moments where he's extremely vulnerable. I don't have a tendency on what that means, but I will say this. Uh, that when they came back, the Bills were on the road at, at Tampa a few weeks back. Uh, they were getting stomped uh, going into the locker room at half. They turn it around, take that thing to overtime. They lose, uh, which we were the beneficiary of in an overtime cover so with a great. touchdown. It was like uh, one of three in a row for us. Absolutely. I think both, uh, both myself and my kids jumped through our table uh, just like a, a – a Bills fan would do in that uh, <laughs> scenario, even though we were on off the other the side rope off the top rope. Uh, I'm pretty sure Hagen went from chandelier down through the coffee table. Fantastic. It was a sight to behold. Uh, but ever since that turnaround, they, they, they've looked like a different team and they've looked really poised. I hate to go against Bill Belichick though, in the playoffs, that's never a good side to be on, especially catching points. Uh, it's going to be a fun game because they're divisional opponents, but, uh, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think you're seeing there? 
I actually lean under here. So the total opened at 43 and a half. It's moved to 44 and a half, which is great. Um, but I lean under simply from the Mac Jones scheming perspective and then the Bill Belichick playoff uh, just dastardly evil mind genius uh, going up against the bills and you know, the bills do pose problems for them because they can run it and throw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, even their game, their run game outside of Josh Allen uh, is, is really good. So I actually lean under the total um, here and then I'll, I'll just kind of slightly lean to the bills probably, but we'll probably diagnose this game a little bit further. What do you got going on in the aforementioned Tampa game? Uh, Sunday, right after you get out of church. What you, Early what you Sunday, Philadelphia at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's minus eight and a half uh, in this game. Currently, the total is 48. The Eagles, all they do is run it. They're, That's it. They're, they're number one. Good at it. They're, they're very, very good at it. The Buccaneers, all they do is stop the run. So I don't see how... The Eagles, who rested 16 of their starters, rested and or coveted uh, 16 of their starters against the Cowboys in such a fugazi scored game and, you know, ridiculousness. What the hell does fugazi mean? It's fake. It's a fugazi. I'm unfamiliar with that. Are you seriously? Not a big vocabulary, more into stats uh, than than vocabulary. Okay. Uh, I'm into vocabulary and not time and you are into stats. Uh, all right. So that that's my lean here is just a, how are they going to score? How are the Eagles going to score? Uh, if they can't run the ball, they're going to get waxed. That's, that's very, very simple. I think this is the narrative here is fairly easy. You don't see Tampa getting bounced as a defending champ at home. Uh, I give the Eagles virtually no chance to win this game at all. Uh, so the number is very interesting. Hey, does, uh, does Tampa take take the, take their foot off the gas in the second half? Do you do you look at a backdoor cover? My guess is probably not because Jalen Hurts doesn't throw the ball that often anyway. I know that the Bucks won. They played earlier. They played in October. Bucks win at Philly by six points. So you know eight and a half is going to attract some Philly bets for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, but they're kind of a one trick pony. The one stat that I did uh, enjoy reading yesterday. Uh, Eagles 10 and one against the spread, their last 11 spots as an underdog. That's a pretty cool stat. It's a um, lot of Doug Peterson. In that there. is a lot of Doug Peterson, who will undoubtedly get one of these open NFL jobs, right? It's got to. I mean, he's won a Super Bowl, he spent a year on the sideline. Uh, he can clearly work with damn near any amount of talent at any position. Uh, I would assume that he is going to be very much in play for that Chicago job. Uh, it just seems like a fit to me uh, in the, in so much as why would you not want to get to develop Justin Fields? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just back to this game, I don't, I don't think that Philly has the metal uh, to hang with, with Tampa in the spot. Agree. All right. 49ers at Cowboys. This one is simulcast on Nickelodeon. So you're going to get your slime. hard pass. You're going to get your slime touchdown on and Nate Burleson and all the kids from Nick Jr. Probably Dora is doing play by play. I would think Dora tag teaming with the Thunderman. So please don't ever say Dora tag teaming on this podcast again. Uh, 49ers at Cowboys, Cowboys minus three total uh, now 51 up from 50 and a half. That total seems high. It does seem very high. Um, I am a Cowboys fan, but I am a gambler. And so I don't really care. Uh, The 49ers, as we talked about on the last podcast, like the hottest team in the NFL, Uh, they go down to L.A. We were on the 49ers plus four and a half at the Rams, and they're down 17 to three. 17 to zero. 17 to zero. 17-3 17-3 at halftime. And then they said, you know what? We don't need Jimmy G to throw the ball again. So they have what you described as the best drive you've seen in the NFL in 10 years. Yep. Stand by that. Where they run the ball nine times and then throw a halfback pass. Genius. And score. 
and they proceeded to just dominate on the ground. And what can the Cowboys not stop? Well, they cannot stop Jerry from drinking. Uh, that's one thing. They on can't the stop. field, what can <laughs> they can't stop the run? And so if San Francisco decides this is what we're going to do, I don't know why they wouldn't. They can dictate this game. Uh, I love any under Jimmy G props we can find. Do you know who leads or who led end of week 18? That still sounds weird to say the NFL in turnovers, turnovers, take takeaways would be a better way to put it. You know who led? That's right. The Cowboys. Jimmy Garoppolo loves to turn the ball over. That's at true. Very inopportune times. That game against the Rams should never have gone into overtime because San Francisco had all that momentum in the second half. They're driving. Uh, then, he, then he throws a, a interception. I know it went off a player, but nonetheless, uh, kind of an ill-advised throw into traffic as they're driving and turn the ball over to the Rams. Rams then take that, go down the field score. Jimmy G is not to be trusted. Um, I, I do think he he might have gotten a date with Angie Harmon. No, no one, no one got a date with. An- I asked Angie Harmon out on the date, but I think he actually uh, closed the deal with her. Well, he's closed the deal with a porn star. All right, moving right <laughs> along. Uh, San Francisco is tough. That's that's the biggest thing here. Yeah, the Cowboys tougher than they have been, but I don't think anyone in the league's tougher than San Francisco. They will punch you in the face. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I do love the 49ers uh, in this spot, and we will discuss further and get it to our subscribers. Last game. No, there's two more games. Well, uh, can you let me finish? Yep. Good Lord, man. Last game Sunday, Sunday night football. Collinsworth will slide into this one. Steelers at Chiefs. Open minus 13 and a half, currently minus 12 and a half. Uh, Mike Tomlin goes to sleep during the (laughs) the Chargers Raiders game, which makes me just think he was this team is terrible. And he's like, how are we in the playoffs? And he just went to sleep. He's like, I don't even care. I'm just going to take a nap. Uh, And I big Ben, not good down the stretch. Not good. I know they won games to make into the playoffs they beat the Ra- uh, Raiders win games in spite wins. of themselves they really have and the Chiefs on the other hand kind of getting hot right uh, defense playing a lot better we talked about it on the last podcast uh, Mahomes starting to find his legs they get Kelsey back from COVID last week they beat the Broncos at the Broncos did not cover but uh, they had that game in hand uh, uh, I think there at the end definitely in the second half uh, Kansas city. Good. Got to be the odds on favorite to, uh, re- repeat as AFC champs. I say that because how the hell the Titans got the number one seed is, is literally beyond me. Uh, especially with Derrick Henry being out down the stretch run of the season. He's, he is, he's kind of everything for that offense. I mean, I've watched Tennessee operate with Tannehill, uh, being, you know, shouldering a lot of that load, and that's just not his spot. I mean, he's a great Trent Dilfer kind of quarterback, <laughs> if you ask me, and if you're going to look at comparisons. Uh, here's an interesting stat that I put together myself last night, mm-hmm. and that is that Kansas City, we all kind of look at, you know, they got thumped by Buffalo in October. Hey, is this a passing in the guard? Has 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 Buffalo surpassed Kansas City in terms of, power rankings uh, since that game, that Kansas city defense, 10 points a game allowed at home. Solid. You know how many points they allowed uh, to Pittsburgh when they played that uh, dreadful game a couple of weeks ago, 10, 10 points. I'm going to look at that and say, it's probably the case that Pittsburgh doesn't get more than two touchdowns in this game. Mm-hmm. And I just don't see how at home arrowhead at night, crazy fans, awesome fans Mm -hmm. don't take advantage of that and, and, and take them by 20 points. I I think it's got a 20 point beat down written all over, especially Najee Harris hurt his elbow Mm -hmm. and without him being a threat and in the mix, 
Uh I don't know how you strategize that if you're Pittsburgh. Najee Harris, 340 touches this year. Uh, Most for a rookie. (laughs) No turnovers. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty great. But his team sucks, so we like the Chiefs. All right. Monday Night Football. Excuse me. Our second interdivisional game three of the playoffs. Cardinals at Rams. Rams are minus three and a half. uh, Open. Uh, Currently, Rams are minus four. You know, the Cardinals here get Nuke Hopkins back. Uh, Is that official? I haven't seen that. Well, that's like the whole point. That's the whole point of them playing in the playoffs (laughs) is so that we can see DeAndre Hopkins. I don't know that that's right. right. No, the whole point of them shutting him down for the last month of the season was to get him back for the playoffs. And now you're telling me that he's not back. I just haven't seen that they've said, hey, he's playing this week. Nuke Hopkins is going to play. All right. I bet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, medical staff, Scott. Uh, Dr. Scott to the rescue. All right. What do we, what do you like in this one? Uh, I think it's hard to go against the Rams. I, I, I feel like if they play up to their potential, they're the best team in the NFC, maybe the NFL, probably the NFL. Matt Stafford needs to figure out how to freaking be consistent though. Didn't you ask him on a date also? I did not. He also did go to my high school. Oh. I get I sometimes I get this cross pollination between your life and I have never asked a man out on a date. <laughs> Except for Jason Bate. <laughs> no, I'm asking him to be in our fantasy base. You're line. asking him for a commitment. That's true. That's I am what's asking him for on. commitment. That's gotcha. true. But Stafford here is just so inconsistent. The Rams have a real problem at home, also, when the opposing team is making so much noise that your quarterback mentions it in his post-game press conference. That's an issue. Well, you're not, if you're in LA, you're not really supposed to be in public. I know that that's looked down upon strongly in Los Angeles. So it makes all the sense in the world. Arizona fans are going to travel. It's right there. They play each other all the time. Uh, None of these scenarios though, allow Kyler Murray to get taller. (laughs) <laughs> and passes will be batted down at the line of scrimmage. Uh, the Rams kind of own Arizona. Uh, one in nine against the spread is Arizona against the Rams last 10 meetings. That That's going to shade where we're probably going to go with this pick. Uh, however, the the Hopkins news is is pretty significant. Yeah. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that monitors. Uh, Coach Bro, first appearance in the playoffs, and Kyler Murray in his five six stature taking on the Rams. All right, that will do it for the NFL playoffs. Let's talk momentarily about the absolute flame that you are on in college. Flame shoots. throwing, throwing them all over the place. I look like Robin Hood, firing arrows. Uh, on the website, linesite2020.com, you can see our uh, performance this year in college basketball, 61, 48, and 3, plus 9.1 units. Last week was a smoke show, the last few days, really. Um, and then last night on the court, Baylor loses to Texas Tech, USC loses to Stanford, Bob Knight pops the champagne as the last two undefeated teams in college basketball uh, go down. Uh, That was an incredibly fun deal. Back to the record real quick, because I do want to address that. It's our goal uh, every season to see about 30 units, uh, obviously on the positive side, in college basketball. What that typically means is we want to be in double digits uh, by the end of January uh, as we're heading into like Super Bowl weekend. And we are so far outpacing that. And uh, it just is... Uh, it, it looks good to us to see all of this data, right? Cause we didn't release any picks last year uh, on college basketball. Cause most of the season was played without fans, which is a huge, huge uh, liability, especially uh, for the home in team, college basketball, especially in college basketball yeah. needs students, needs fans, needs the uh, compactness of a basketball arena. It, there's kind of nothing like it. That's why uh, Texas hasn't been good at college basketball in a long time. Uh, they've been good enough, 
little sweet 16 appearance. That's all, that's all that's required in Austin. I think that uh, expectation is, is now changing. Uh, but I will say uh, that we, we are on a heater right now. Um, last night uh, was huge. We hit, ironically, two big 12 games. Two road underdogs, both catching 12 and a half points. Mm-hmm. Tech goes into Waco, knocks off the Bears, and then uh, Iowa State comes within an eyelash of knocking off Kansas, also catching 12 and a half at Allen Fieldhouse. Um, and then we scored another two uh, two unit uh, win with West Virginia. Only, only giving up two points at home against Oki State. Mm-hmm. And Oki State, granted, just coming off a big win at home against Texas. Uh, but, you know, West Virginia fans in both football and basketball, crazy. They love their Mountaineers. That was an easy, easy win for us right there. So They burn couches. They do, but not inside. Well, they, that's you. Good. They know and are experienced enough that you you have to both conduct marriage ceremonies within your family outside and burn couches outside. They, the, the two things that I know about West Virginia are the couch burning thing and they uh, drink more Mountain Dew than any state in uh, the, the union. Uh, Mountain Dew would be a great sponsor for us. No doubt. Kyle Patterson loves Mountain Dew. He's the only person I know that still drinks Mountain Dew. Does he like the red one? No, he drinks, I think, just the regular one. Well, either way, it's got way too much sugar, and I hope my kids never discover it in their entire life. Let's look at tonight. Well, we'll do a little look ahead on college hoops because it is really a fun time in college basketball. Uh, we've kind of launched uh, conference play. Now we're now we're getting into the now meat of the conference cadence. play. Now we're getting the cadence. It feels and looks like a fantastic product. Tonight, 14th-ranked Nova goes to Xavier, ranked 17th. Uh, we love the Mountaineer. I mean, excuse me. We love the Musketeers. Mm. I was just talking about the Mountaineers. Yes. Uh, quite a bit. Always like the Xavier program. Really, really strong. Always kind of under the radar, too, uh, which is weird because they've been a tremendous brand for two decades. Uh, our dear friend, Dr. Paul Alberico, will no doubt be drinking IPAs and watching Nate Johnson rain threes tonight against uh, a very overrated Nova team. Jay Wright. Uh, Nate Johnson, 46% from beyond the arc. Fantastic. That guy can nail him. Uh, tomorrow night, this game is near and dear to your heart, Mr. Woodard. Uh, 13th ranked Ohio State goes into the Cole Center to play Wisconsin, ranked 16th. You got superstar battle. EJ Liddell, Dude. 20 points per game against Johnny Davis, 22 points per game. EJ Liddell, still good. That wingspan. He reminds me of Charles Barkley a little bit. Yeah, I can see that a lot. That's a very good comparison. Um, He kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, big dog Glenn Robinson from back in the Purdue days. Yeah, just strong, can score. Really strong, always in the right place on the court. Yes. Like incredible smarts. Uh, Johnny Davis, if you haven't seen him play for Wisconsin, man, he does everything. 22 points a game is a heck of a lot of points per game in college basketball. Yes. That just doesn't really happen. And that yeah, I can be that can be said for some of the best players uh, over the years. They, both these teams, four and one in Big Ten play, uh, revenge game, because, you know, the Big Ten's a little unstable because they have uh, 65 teams, I think, <laughs> in the conference. But the Big 65. Ohio State won by 18 points when they hosted uh, Wisconsin back uh, a month ago, really uh, early, earlyish part of December. Uh, but nobody's hotter than Wisconsin right now. Yes. I mean, they go into Purdue uh, last week and beat Purdue outright. Super impressive. Again, another huge game from Johnny Davis. Uh, this is a Thursday night game. Definitely check, check that out. There's no football to compete with. Mm-hmm. If you like uh, some hard nose uh, scoring, uh, that's your game. Uh, anything else on Liddell? He's still good. Okay. Uh, Saturday, got some some big games there. Number 22, Tennessee, goes to 18th, Kentucky. Uh, Rick Barnes versus John Calipari. Mm -hmm. Always a good matchup. Rick, sweet 16 Barnes. (laughs) That was the expectation, and as long as he could have kept that run going. He meets. 
<laughs> That's right. And he's good everywhere he goes. You're never going to have to worry about a down. Season That's really true. Lawrence. He is. He is very consistent. Uh, and his team plays really, really hard. Always. Uh, then you've got your Texas Longhorns, number 21 in the country, going to Iowa State. Texas ripped OU last night pretty good in front of the uh, 18, 19 fans at the Frank Irwin Center. With their, uh, was he their point guard, Cortez, who looks like Mitch from Days and Confused? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have, we have, contemplated what his actual ethnicity is because he looks like he's got a lot going on in there. Yes, probably Hispanic got a sweet last deal. name and looks like a Native American white kid. He looks like uh, <laughs> Pocahontas. <laughs> he does kind of look like Pocahontas. Uh, so Texas is going to go into um, Ames, Iowa. Always a tough place to play. Uh, Iowa State coming off that mm, nail-biter loss at, uh, at Allen Fieldhouse. That's going to be a tremendous game on Saturday. Uh, one thing I want to highlight on uh, college basketball, and that is, and you, you heard me mention this last episode, this defensive efficiency mm -hmm. statistic, it tells you everything you really want to know. We put a huge emphasis on this statistic in our picks, and here's one for you. Here's the deal. Eight, eight SEC teams in the top 50 in defensive efficiency. That's pretty damn good. Strong. I think it's, it's, it's again, we talked about that brand of basketball that the SEC has. It's just tough. They play a lot of defense, obviously. Let me go one better. How many big 12 teams do you think are in the top 50? SEC has eight. How many, what's your guess on the big 12? Six, nine, nine, nine of the 10, nine of the 10 teams, big 12 schools. <laughs> Nine of the 10 big 12 schools and the big 10 has 65 schools. Right. Okay. And so just give you a little look ahead, sec big 12 challenge two weeks from now, that's going to be exciting basketball. I love that. I love that. They just get in your face all the time. There are no free shots. You're not having a guy wide open behind the three point line, just setting his feet under him and just making uh, the easy shots. So there's always a hand in the face. And I don't just mean a flare up. I'm talking hand in the face right at, at the release point. And that's what makes it uh, tremendous uh, watching one last thing on basketball. Uh, we we offer up at line site uh, football plays because we understand where the market is and, and we're good at it and we like it. But the biggest value that we can bring is a college basketball. I mean, line site 2020 is there to uh, give you information so that you can win at at sports and sports wagering college basketball, Major League Baseball. That's why you want to be a subscriber. We understand everyone thinks they know football, even though they clearly don't. Uh, but as this we're is getting, as we're getting texts during halftime. Hey, should I take Alabama second half? Yeah, no, right. no, you should not. No, they will. They will not win that game. But in any event, come join us for college basketball. We will tell you where to go. If you don't know how to uh, register a wager, uh, we will instruct you on how to do that. It's fairly easy, but just do everything that, that, that our math models and analytics say, because you will end up winning. Yeah. And I think that's the key, right? You go there for information, you subscribe to turn your brain off, uh, get it out of the way and let our models and our brains do the work for you. So as always, thank you, Mr. Morris. Thank you, Scott, for riding shotgun today. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like I ride shotgun every time. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, Frito. Frito Nation Productions at the helm. Always a joy to come and sit in the same room with a radio legend like Frito. Thank you to all the listeners. Uh, go visit the website, www.linesite2020.com. Come be the title sponsor of Here's the Deal, because here's the deal. We're about to blow up. We are about to do some great live uh, production. We are going to get some guests. We are going to really provide the value that local, national, international companies are looking for, for not very much money. 
I believe that the next round table that we have in here and get these two open seats should involve Angie Harmon and Jason Bateman. Okay, let's do it. We'll see you next time. Here's the deal.